Hi, Akeem. Ife. Thank you guys for joining me on this conversation. Yes, I did chair the steering committee of the Recovery Fund, but I think you guys did the heavy lifting. And it would be good for everybody to hear from you about the entire process, your learnings, and what we took away from the whole process. Um, so why do you, Akeem, why do you think we had to have the Recovery Fund? Well, um, after executing the Recovery Fund 1.0 to support entrepreneurs who were affected negatively by the NSAS protest and over 2,000 businesses, Mr. Governor was quite impressed with the execution process, the impact that it had, and then told us that uh, we can't go home. COVID was still there affecting small businesses and we needed to be there for them. We needed to show them that, 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 uh, that we still believe and we want to support them. So that was why, in my opinion, we did it to preserve. Great. Um, so if I ask you, yeah, what do you think was the most significant contributor to the success of the initiative? So for me, what I think, what I think is the most important uh, yeah. contributor to the success of the program was uh, the entire chain of people involved in the process. Um, from the steering committee to the donors, even to the beneficiaries themselves, they were all important in the execution of this program. I think I agree with you because we had we had a very credible team of, of steering committee from 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 EDC down to our partner to our partners Access Bank and the like we had UNDP also on the committee and then they they, they brought in their experiences from from various fields and also our very patient beneficiaries who who understood that we had to go through process we cannot give we cannot why want to be as fast with them we have to ensure that we also ensure that we, we take our boxes. Interesting. Okay, so that contributed to success, but what were the challenges you guys faced in execution as well? Well, the challenges, one one was, well, we, like like I keep saying to beneficiaries, we wish we had a lot of money, we wish we had a sea of funds, we would have given them as much as they wanted, but we had to ensure that we, we, we increase the, the number of beneficiaries, as well as also increasing the depth of how much we give them. So maybe number one would be, we wish we had a, a, a blank check. <laughs> Um, coming up um, on that, what I came said, one of the challenges we faced was uh, for the first uh, recovery fund, we had to do a lot in a very short period of time. So uh, at that moment, it was very, very difficult for everybody. And because we are emotionally invested in it, uh, we had to make sure that we had sleepless nights. Uh, <laughs> sleepless nights. And all in all, um, that was the initial problem that we faced. Everybody had to work overtime for it to become a success. Because I, I must say that the team definitely were able to navigate that process, um, navigate all those challenges, and still were able to support how many again? Okay. 2,876 small businesses. That's for 2.0. That's for 2.0. For 1.0, mm -hmm. it was 2,000. Great. And in, in we did, we've, so, so far, with the recovery program, we've disbursed about how much? 2,030 as a team. Oh, great. Okay. That's about 86% of the total number of beneficiaries. Okay, so yes, I'm having this discussion with men, but so how do women benefit from this program? Well, um, in our mandate, uh, women first. Women first. <laughs> so even in the even in the terms of applications and terms of approval, we see that more women apply for these things. So uh, literally, that will translate to more women beneficiaries. Um, as it stands, uh, the beneficiaries of that program, uh, women account for at least 52%. Great. Our men have uh, 48%, so sorry to you. <laughs> and also, even on the steering committee, we had more women than men. Ah. So, 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 so it was female driven. Great. Female -driven. Good to know that. So when women do the work, it gets done. <laughs> and so, yeah, we, we've been talking about our achievements on the program and how well it went. But if, if I ask you, what were the fundamental learnings? Being on the field, doing the verifications, um, assessing the grants, what were the fundamental learning? Um, from my point of view, um, we do something the, in Lagos Innovator is my primary assignment uh, with our revolve around grants, and we see the success of um, grants on businesses. So, replicating that in the recovery fund, uh, we've been able to see that a lot of businesses can, a lot of sustainable businesses can thrive given the right amount of grants. Uh, more jobs are saved, more jobs are created. So, using the learnings from what we do at uh, Lagos Innovate, um, it has definitely replicated itself in the recovery from 1.0 and 2.0. And also, I think some of the points is one, the, the believability of this. 
you know, beneficiaries um, telling you that I've not, I, I've not been to your office before. I just applied online. I got my emails and I went to get my money. So for us, it was it was it was it was a sign to people that you can that it was it was also a testament to the fact that you don't have to know anybody code like the same government. You can do the right thing, apply the right processes, and you get it. The second was the importance of bookkeeping. A lot of right. businesses overestimated their works. Oh, they make five hundred thousand naira a month. A lot of them are, are adding donations from family and friends to business, so to business income. So when you say bring in your record, so that it is significantly lesser. But with the recovery from the, they now understand the importance of keeping accurate records and the effect that it has both on securing grants or even other financing instruments. That's interesting. So how do you think, when you talk about bookkeeping, how do you think um, digital literacy, how do you think that can help improve all this um, record keeping, accuracy of records for businesses. Yeah, so I think one thing that we've, we've observed is it's quite a um, herculean task to finish at the end of the day and start writing how many customers came, how much you make, and they're like, how many tomatoes you sold, tomato <laughs> you sold how many baskets, how many pieces did you give this yeah. customer that came. Also, that if, 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 if they make these transactions via POS machines, online transfers, it automatically records itself. They yeah. don't, so they can always go back to it. So, as they put the right description, transfer the money, put tomato on top of it. Mm -hmm. so, so by the time they get their records at the end of the period, they would see how much came in and, try, and the description will tell them what they bought, which saves them um, that, that, um, what you call it, that stress. So unconsciously, they, they, they started keeping their books because of the mode of payment. So if more small right. businesses can get their money online via POS machines, via transfers, a bit non-cash, the more non-cash they do, the better their records are being kept unconsciously for them, which is good. So if you need them to send their records, just tell them to keep out your bank statement. Mm. And you're fine. So there's still a lot of work to do at that. A lot. <laughs> the way both of you agreed immediately. But <laughs> but you know, despite all of yeah, I know that there's still challenges. Um, there's still a lot of work that we can do to help improve the um, results for the MSMEs. How would you describe the entrepreneurial spirit of Lagos MSMEs? Lagos MSMEs are rugged. Very very rugged. And I like the fact that they don't back down. Mm. Um, it's not a very simple thing to hold a business technology, especially in the city like mm. So for those that don't have the skill in the game, for those that it's good, their shops open, their back is open, you know, it takes a whole lot of um, screen back to see this from what we gave us. So I give it to them, they are okay. <laughs> I think I think for me they are they're very innovative. Mm. The way the way the way the way businesses respond to situations. Yes, people could not open their shops. It was call me, TikTok became a mode of advertising. I don't have to open my shop again. I can sell. Even people said even tell us that using our leftover materials for, for, for face masks. Because they had to do something. So entrepreneurs in Lagos are very innovative. You you no matter no matter what you put at them, they find a way of coming out. They would always open their shop. They would always make that money because, because they're always thinking. Which is which something I, I respect about them. Totally, I, I agree. I think um, we've seen the resilient spirit in a lot of the MSMEs we've had to deal with as well um, over the years. But before we end this conversation, what would be that one advice that you would have for every SME that may come across this video? Your advice may also be to donors. It doesn't have to be only MSMEs. Okay. Um, my advice to MSMEs in Lagos generally, or even people that are not in businesses. Whenever you see any government opportunity, don't think of it as a fast or a, a small step. A lot of people are beneficiaries to you because they don't apply. If you don't apply, if you don't show these ones, if you don't believe in this, if you don't reach out, there's no way we can help. Um, the government has the responsibility of uh, supporting its uh, citizens, but they can't come to know from everybody. So you need to take the leap of faith and apply to this thing. So my major word of encouragement for people that want to benefit from the government is anytime you see an opportunity online, offline, apply for it. And to our donors as well, um, thank you for what you've done so far. And uh, there's no reason for me to do more with us. <laughs> and like, I think, I think for me, just like you said, we have over 4,000 business owners in Lagos who can testify to the fact that click apply. It is real. You don't have Take a your documents and get it. And also, is to, to small businesses, business owners in Lagos, 
what you do is more important to Lagos and even yourself. Yes, you're doing it to be able to have money in your pocket, to buy the latest gadgets, but it also adds to the economy and GDP of Lagos. So when that time comes when you feel that you're tired, you don't want to do it again, please keep going because we are dependent on you. The economy of Lagos needs you to keep thriving. The GDP of Lagos is going to rise because you rise up every morning and you go to work. So, and most importantly, LSNTF is here to help you. We know it is not easy, and that's why we are here. Always believe that we are here for you. Most importantly, we did for you, like we always say. So, um, in closing, I'll just say that Akim and Ife has said it all. It was not um, a walk in the park. It was, it was. It took commitment. It took um, the dedication of the team that worked on all the programs to make sure the MSMEs got the right support. But the MSMEs, we need you. And the truth is the government is not in the business of creating jobs. It's you guys that create the jobs. So we need you to keep thriving. We need you to keep producing. We need you to stay open. And we're here to help you do that. So keep going as you contribute to Lagos. You're contributing to Nigeria and eventually Africa. Thank you for your time. Thank you, guys. <laughs>